Hello, friends. It's Abby with the Oils Market Show. And I wanted to come in today and give a little recap on the 75 hard challenge that I've shared with you guys that I was doing and just give you guys an update. I kind of started really strong. I was on social media. I was sharing the kind of day-to-day -day things. I was doing little videos here for you guys and just kind of sharing my journey along the way. And during that time, I've since gone off of social media. And so I haven't really been, and even before I officially went off social media, I was still kind of not going super hard sharing everything as I initially intended to. My idea was I was going to share all the things. And then the more I went through the challenge, the more I was just really feeling the, the Lord stirring my heart to get off of social media. And it was kind of a process. And that's a whole nother thing that, um, I will probably share more in detail soon, but brief, brief recap on even that it's been wonderful to be off social media. It's been wonderful. I highly, highly recommend it doesn't really make sense when you have a business online, but you know, I just, I feel like even the more that I share about, taking that step off. There's other people that are like, I feel like my heart is stirred for that too. And I think that there's a lot of people, even my daughter's generation, she's 19, my oldest daughter. And she was like, I feel like my generation's like wanting something different. They want to get off social media. So it's kind of a trend and it's so good, but I wanted to go over 75 hard recap. So basically what 75 hard is, if you haven't watched my other videos and you're just finding this video and you're listening for the first time, basically what it is, is for 75 consecutive days, you do two 45 minute workouts a day and one has to be outside. You have to stick to a meal plan and it's whatever meal plan you choose. It can be intermittent fasting. It could be the lion diet. It can be I don't know, gluten-free, it can be whatever, but you pick a diet and you stick to that for the whole time. You also drink a gallon of water a day. Holy moly. I know insanity. And you read 10 pages in a physical book every single day. And you're supposed to take a progress picture, but that just felt excessive to do that every single day to like take a picture of yourself standing in the mirror or whatever. So I never even started that, but the other things I was doing. Okay. So you just keep track of it and you go for it no matter what. And you don't have any excuses. You set your non-negotiables, you prioritize it, you make it happen for 75 consecutive days. If you miss a day, miss one of the aspects of the day, you're supposed to start over from day one and start fresh again. And so I had all my sticky notes. I had this you know, in our front big window, I had sticky notes for 75 days. So every day as I would finish, you know, the last bit of water for each day, then I would take my sticky note off and go through all that. So, you know, brief spoiler, I didn't finish the 75 days. I still would have a few more to go. Um, and I am not a quitter. I, I will hurt myself to finish what I started, but I'm going to kind of go through, why I started it, things that I loved, things that I didn't love, things, reasons why I didn't finish. I'm going to go over all that stuff with you. But first of all, I will say that I, I learned so much in the process. I really, really enjoyed the process. I, I loved it. I, I love being pushed physically. I've joked how I like, I want a coach yelling at me, <laughs> screaming for me to finish. Um, you know, I love Braveheart where he's like, you know, war paint and screaming freedom. That is like my inner, <laughs> inner self. And I love, I love that. I love a challenge. I love being pushed in discipline. I love being stretched in areas. And there's been years that I have been doing things that are a lot of like mental work, like a lot of like inner healing, praying through things, um, learning, growing a lot of mindset things that I've done for years. And I have thought for years, I just want a physical challenge. I want something physical because the mental stuff can be so exhausting in a different way. And I just, I'm like, I just want a physical challenge. Right. And so 
anyways, I've had that thought in my mind for a while. And then recently, um, you know, this whole year I've been on a journey. I've shared it a little bit here. I've shared it more over on my other podcast, anointed mother podcast. I'll link it, um, in the notes below, but I share a lot on motherhood. I share a lot on my faith. I share a lot on just what the Lord's been doing in my life this year, specifically of just getting as much of God's word in my heart and my mind on a daily basis, more than I've ever in my life. And I've been a Christian my whole life, loved Jesus, loved God's word my whole life. But this year it was the, the passing of my father-in-law who was like a father to me. And I just love him so much. And he was so influential in my life. And when he passed, there was something that like broke in me of, of there just a lot of like superficial stuff that doesn't matter in light of eternity stuff kind of broke off of me in that, in that season of fresh after he passed. Um, and it was just like some holy work that God was doing in my life. And then it started me on this journey of like listening, um, to the Bible on a high amount, I love, I learn a lot more when I'm listening to the audio Bible. And so I've been listening to that and I've been processing things and I've been growing in my faith even more. And I, it's, it's just, it's been an incredible year of the Lord doing some major work in my life. And a lot of that has been through just reading God's word. And so I highly recommend getting as much of God's word in your heart and your mind as humanly possible. I heard this guy share that you can get, you can read the whole Bible in a month if you read about 40 chapters a day. And so I was, you know, give me a, give me a good challenge. And so I challenged myself to do it. Um, I did it in a month and a half. So not quite 30 days. My husband did it, um, in 30 days, but it was a month and a half and it was incredible. And I've just, since then, I'm like, if I can do this in a month and a half, I just want to keep doing this. And so that's been this year has just been as much of God's word in my mind, in my heart as possible. And so it's, it's pushed me in my relationship with the Lord. I'm asking the Lord to uproot things in my life and, he's showing me things and areas that I need to change. And it's just been incredible. But in this process, as I've been seeking the Lord, I, there's things that I'm praying for that I know that I, I can't do in my own strength. And so I'm having to wait on the Lord and it is good to wait on the Lord because it, you have to surrender. You have to open your hands. You have to wait on him in a way that is really challenging if you're the type of person that wants to just handle it and get things done and achieve and accomplish and go for it and handle the situation, right? When you have to wait on the Lord and trust the Lord, it does something to your heart and you have to trust him in a whole different way. And it's really, really good. It's really incredible. And so anyways, I'm in the season where I have been asking the Lord for certain things and I know that I need to wait. It has to be what the steps ahead have to be the Lord's hand and only the Lord. And so I'm to be faithful, but I'm also to trust the Lord in his timing. And so knowing that I started asking the Lord, like, can you give me something to do though? Like I just, I need something. I need something physical to do with my hands as I'm waiting. I trust you. I love you. I want to do whatever you want me to do, but I, as I'm waiting, it can give me something, throw me a bone. Right. And so as I was praying for that, then this challenge kept coming up. I kept seeing stuff on 75 hard, And so I was like, okay, Lord, I'm going to do it. I'm just going to, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go all in. I'm going to run with this. And it it has been so good for me to just have something physical to do. And in that physical process, I, so in this challenge, you're, you're supposed to do two 45 minute exercises a day, one being outside. And so my kind of what I was doing and something that I learned along the challenge was the more that I can get done in the morning, the better chances I have of completing each day's activities. And so in the morning, you know, getting, getting up and starting my first 45 minute workout and, you know, my babies are sleeping. And so I'm doing like a quiet exercise, but I'm doing my weights and, um, you know, that, that type of type of stuff. And then when I go outside, I'll do walking or running. And so, every morning I would pop right out of bed and it really helped me to just pop right out, not even think about it and just start. And so I would have my water and I would start exercising. And when I would exercise, I would listen to the Bible on audio. And so I'd have 45 minutes of listening to the Bible first thing in the morning. 
And then my 45 minutes outside, I, that was like my prayer time. And so I would pray, I would listen to worship. I would seek the Lord. I would ask him questions. He is not afraid of our questions. Ask the Lord questions. And it was just, it was incredible. It, it has been such a blessing and a gift in my life. And so as I have, you know, I asked the Lord, like, give me something to do. And so this was my physical thing to do. And then throughout this time, as it was coming to the end, when I was, um, basically right before I decided to not finish, I felt so something the Lord has been working on in me is to release the need to strive for success, to take things into my, cause ultimately it's like control for me. And so if I can control something, I feel better. I feel safe in that of like, I want to have my hands in the business. Right. And so the Lord has been stripping me of that need to strive and to control things and to consistently daily come to him with open hands of surrender. And so as I was doing this, I realized there, there was, I mean, this process has been incredible and the Lord has done so much in those, those times of, of exercise. That's when the Lord has met with me for years. It's been when I work out. So having two times a day that I was working out and seeking the Lord and listening to God's word, incredible, highly recommend it. It was wonderful. Um, and it's something that I'm going to continue doing, but as I was seeking the Lord in certain areas, I felt like the Lord was highlighting to me that I'm still striving and I'm still, I'm striving in areas that he has not told me to strive in. And so working hard is good. Um, doing things with excellence is good. Doing things as unto the Lord is good. Doing things well is good. But when we put, um, like our identity is in it and we're striving to win, we're striving to succeed. We're striving for position, for a title, for an accomplishment or whatever. And it's not necessarily the thing that, that God is asking us to do, and it becomes more about us than about him, then that's a problem. And so I felt like I was kind of shifting in that striving mode of, and I'll get to it, like why I, I stopped officially, but it was getting to that point where I was like, I, I'm now striving to finish it, but for what, like, who am I trying to, who is it for? What is it for? Right. And if it's not benefiting me in the Lord or physically or whatever, if I'm, if it's not a benefit and it's actually like the opposite now, because I'm pushing myself too hard and I'm striving too hard, then it can become an idol. And I don't want to have any other idols in my life. The Lord has been really showing me, revealing any areas that I have, that there's any idolatry, anything that's propped up that is, that should not be. And so that's been part of that is realizing, oh, I, I will still find ways to strive because I need, I feel like almost like it is a, I'm proving myself, but to who, right? If, if everything I do is for the Lord, then I don't have to prove myself to the Lord in look how hard I did 75 hard. Right. And so I just felt like the Lord was like giving me that grace to, to just be like, Hey, I, you're striving in areas that I did not ask you to strive in. And so still, this is an area that you need to let go of because I don't like to surrender. I don't like to give up. I don't want to quit. I don't want to admit defeat. And here I am on the internet admitting defeat, but it's been so good. So, um, I wanted to share quickly things that I loved about this challenge. I loved the accountability, um, whether it was on social media or just with my family or just seeing the sticky notes on the wall and having that challenge. I love countdowns when I would be ready to have a baby. I would have a countdown on my mirror until they were born. When I was engaged to my husband, I had a countdown until our wedding. I love a good countdown, you know, and so I, I loved it. I loved the accountability. Um, I had friends that were reaching out and we were chatting about things. I got to connect with other people that were, had done the challenge or were going to do the challenge or were in the challenge. And so that was really fun just to have, you know, somebody, other people to talk to about it. Um, so I loved the accountability part. I think that when you're doing anything, any type of challenge, health challenge, business challenge, spiritual challenge, I think it can be really good to have extra levels of accountability to keep you going. And so that was cool. Um, I loved learning how I work best with non-negotiables. If there's certain things that are priority to me, then they have to be a non-negotiable. And so my time with the Lord is a non-negotiable. It's happening. It's just going to happen. I'm going to be listening to the Bible. I'm going to be praying. I'm going to be seeking the Lord. 
exercise, I realize is so good for me to have that, that non-negotiable. I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to wake up and I'm going to do it. And I'm going to start the day with that. And I'm going to work out twice a day. And so that was something that I, you know, I loved. And I, I'm like, what other areas can I bring this into in business or in my motherhood or homemaking or my time with the Lord or whatever, having those non-negotiables and just deciding this is just who I am. I'm going to be this person. I'm going to be the person that does these things. And when it's a non-negotiable, you don't have to think about it. A lot of times we don't do things because there it's an option to do it or not do it. And I, I realized as I was kind of tapering off the challenge, when I stopped having certain, the first thing that I stopped was the water and I'll get to that. But once I decided, okay, so it was a non-negotiable. I was just going to finish the water no matter what. And so it'd be like 10 o'clock at night. And I was like drinking glasses of water and it was just hurting me through the night. And so, um, but in my mind, it was like, this is a non-negotiable. And then when I tapered off of that, then it opened me up to like compromise in other areas. So that was really interesting. Just learning about myself in that. And so in this challenge, you're going to learn a lot about yourself, where you want to cheat, where you want to give yourself excuses, where you do give yourself excuses, where you are stronger, where you're weaker. It's, it's really, really eye opening. but I realize I work best with a non-negotiable because then my brain is not trying to give myself excuses because it's just what's happening versus if I have an option, I could work out it or not then I might not because I'll fill it with something else. If I have an option of how to eat, well, if I'm tempted with something and it's not a, it's not a hard and fast rule, then I'll probably have the thing that I want versus if it's a non-negotiable, I'm just going to eat like this, then I won't budge on it. Right. So having non-negotiables, I realized was really helpful. Um, the twice a day exercise was so good. And it's funny because for some reason I had this unwritten rule in my mind that you just work out once a day. And I kept thinking, I I would love to work out more than once a day. Like if that was my job, you see like supermodels or athletes or whatever. And they're like, they, their job is working out. Right. And I'm like, that would be so cool. But in my mind, there was like this unwritten rule of like, you know, you only work out once a day. And so this gave me permission. I felt like it was like that with the Bible where you read the Bible and you're like, okay, yeah, like a chapter a day. And that's like a rule. And then suddenly the rule was lifted when I heard someone say, you could read the whole Bible in a month. And I'm like, Oh, there is no rule. Like you can just freely read the Bible and it was life-changing. So having the twice a day exercise, especially because that's my time that I really press into the Lord and I'm either listening to the Bible or I'm praying or I'm listening to worship or I'm having conversations sometimes with a friend or my husband. And we're talking about things that the Lord's doing in our hearts. It's just been such a beneficial time. So I've loved that. And I've loved the outside aspect. I love being outside. Even when it would be raining, I'd take my umbrella out there or it'd be freezing. And normally I wouldn't go outside because I don't handle the cold very well, but I found myself loving the weather changes and looking forward to the weather changing and just being outside and being in creation. It was wonderful. So I really loved that. I also loved reading 10 pages a day in a physical book. I am great at starting books, but bad at finishing them. And so this really pushed me. I I finished multiple books in this challenge. And that was really cool because I, I, and I loved the habit that was forming of reading 10 pages a day and having a book open and sitting on the couch. So instead of, you know, scrolling social media or being distracted with something else, I would sit down. Sometimes I'd have a cup of tea and it was cozy in our house and I'd read a book and it was, I loved that. I I really, really enjoyed that discipline of opening a physical book. So that was really awesome. I loved the meal plan. So whether I'm doing intermittent fasting or I'm doing a specific meal plan, I love having something. So I don't have to overthink again, if it's a non-negotiable, this is just what I'm doing that. I don't have to overthink it. I just know whether it's, you know, intermittent fasting, I know these, this is my time window, or if I'm doing a certain specific, you know, not having dairy or added sugars or whatever, then I know, okay, this is what I can eat. This is what I can eat. It makes it simple. And I work really well with that. So that was that was good just to see. Um, and it was an easy weight loss for me. My littlest, I've, I have six kids. My littlest just turned one in October. And so, you know, just trying to lose the last of my, um, baby weight was really helpful. The first 
gosh, week or week and a half, I lost six pounds. I was able to fit into pants that I couldn't fit into before. And so that was exciting. It's, it feels exciting to see something like when you're pushing yourself and then you see a physical change, it's very exciting. So that was really fun. The things that I did not like, the only thing I did not like about the challenge was the water, the gallon a day, what it felt excessive. It felt aggressive, (laughs) that much water. And I don't think you're supposed to necessarily have that much water. And I would do the things where I would add, you know, um, salt water. I would add salt to the water, um, so that my body's absorbing it more, but I just, I, it, it was too much for me. And I felt, I didn't realize that you could over, over drink and actually dehydrate your body where it could, because your body's not actually processing well, it's just kind of like flushing your system, but it's not, it's not giving your body what it needs. And so I felt more dehydrated. It was like, I was drinking a gallon a day, but I felt thirsty. My skin was really dry. Um, I'm breastfeeding. And so I felt like it was affecting my nursing. And so, and it was just like a full-time job drinking water. And then every, you know, few minutes, like you have to go pee. And it was crazy. And it, it was frustrating too, because if I wanted to go somewhere, it was like, you have to still figure out how, how are you going to get all your water in? And then you're going to be, you know, running to the bathroom every few minutes. And if you're in public and you're, you have kids and you're just like, it just, it felt, I kept thinking, this isn't actually helpful to me. And so why am I doing it except just to check off, okay, I did this for 75 days. I drank a gallon of water a day, but if it's not something that I'm going to take with me, then why am I still doing it? And that was really like kind of a turning point for me of like, I want good habits and I want good practices and I want to be disciplined and do really good things. But if it's actually doing something that I don't want to do, um, why am I doing it? Who am I doing it for? Right. What's the point of it? So reasons that I didn't finish. Number one was the water because again, it felt excessive and it, it, it felt like it was doing opposite of what I was wanting it to do. It was just, it was too much for me. Um, my breastfeeding was being affected by it and that still, my daughter is a little over a year and she's still primarily breastfed. And so food has been harder for her to get used to and to start having. And so she'll have little bits at a time, but she's most of the way still breastfeeding as her source of life. And so I have to be really careful. And so even like the food that I was eating, I was making sure I wasn't, you know, pulling out too many carbs and I wasn't, you know, I was having healthy fats and I was trying to do all that stuff. If you guys watched my video on what I would eat, I was trying to be really mindful of how to make sure I'm having enough calories and eating well enough so that not only is it supplying me with what I need, but it's supplying my baby with what she needs. And I felt like it was actually going backwards. I felt like I was my, um, supply was lessening. I felt like it was affecting her and, and then she was also, she's been teething for a while. And so she's been up. And so I was exhausted. I'm not sleeping through the night. She was up just constant. Like when she's teething, all she wants to do is nurse. And so my nursing was being affected by, um, decrease in supply. And then she was teething. So she was up through the night. And so I was just so physically, drained literally (laughs) and uh, just exhausted. And then I would try to pop up first thing in the morning and get to my workout. And then I was trying to get to my other workout and I was trying to homeschool and I was trying to do my business and I was trying to do all these things. And that was really when the Lord was like, "I'm, I'm asking you, you're striving in areas that I have not asked you to. And I felt like I was, I had to finish. I had to accomplish. I had to do this stuff. And it was really me having to release my own ego to say that I'm going to finish this no matter what. I mean, I I went through sickness in the challenge and I was like, unless I physically cannot get out of bed, I even said it on a video, unless I physically cannot get out of bed, I am doing this, which yes, all out, let's go. Right. But when it starts to, I'm striving in areas, the Lord has not asked me to strive. And when it was affecting my baby, that's really when even my husband was like, okay, you might want to rethink this. And so if it was just me and I was just being physically impacted by it in a negative way, I'd probably finish it just for the accomplishment of finishing it. But the fact that it was impacting my daughter and she is, you know, very dependent on me as her life source still. And so I I wanted to make sure that I was making wise decisions. And so 
even just the ability to like, if she finally falls asleep and it's the morning to give myself grace enough to just rest and not feel like I have to pop up and I have to exercise when it's dark and I have to do all these things because I have to get to homeschooling. When the whole point of homeschooling is like, we can do things differently. We can adjust to the needs of our family. We can do things in the afternoon instead of first thing in the morning, we can adjust our days. We can adjust how we're teaching and what we're teaching and all that stuff. That's one of the benefits of homeschooling. And yet I was still in this like must do, must finish, must accomplish. And it wasn't benefiting me. It wasn't benefiting my baby. And it was having impact on my family because then I was like just in that um, striving mode and my adrenals are being affected and my vision is very affected by my lack of sleep. And so it was all kind of all these things together that it was like, okay, for my own ego, I need to let go of my own ego and just be like, okay, it's okay that I don't finish. It's okay. Because I want to, I want to do, I want to make the right decision. And I, I want to do this, whatever I'm doing, I want it to honor the Lord. And is it really honoring the Lord by being grumpy for my family because I'm exhausted and I'm depleted and it's not accomplishing what I, I set out to do. Right. So that was kind of what was making me officially be like, okay, I'm actually, I'm going to stop. Um, but things that I'm going to continue in from this challenge that I loved, I want to keep doing the workouts twice a day when I'm able, I'm not going to strive for it. I'm not going to obsess about it. And if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen, but I have loved, I've loved it. I've loved getting outside in the weather. I've loved when we live in the forest in the mountains. And so it's beautiful, all the different seasons. It's just, it's beautiful. And so even when it's freezing cold, it's just beautiful. And so that has been really, really special. So if I'm able to, I'm going to do it. If it's going to put strain or stress or I need rest, I'm going to listen to my body and I'm going to rest. But those are things that I want to continue in is the double workouts. The book reading is something that I really want to continue in. And I have continued in and it's been so good. I, I, I've loved, and what I'm reading is stories of faith and missionaries and martyrs and just these stories of people that take their faith so seriously that are my people. I take my faith so seriously and being able to read about people in history that were all out, sold out for Jesus, living their life and death in honor of the Lord is just incredible. I love those stories. I love sharing them with my children. And so that's been really, really special to have that time to read physical books and just be encouraged in my face. So that's been wonderful. Uh, food decisions. Also, I do best with a diet or intermittent fasting or something. And so that's been something that I've, I've learned about myself as I do better when I have clarity of what I'm eating and what I'm not eating. And even since this challenge has been over, so I was like no dairy, no added sugars, um, limiting carbs. So I was only having like better for you carbs. I wasn't just snacking on chips and just, you know, empty calories. But then when I stopped the challenge and I started eating differently again, I was like, wow, I don't feel good. I don't feel, um, and that was also affecting my daughter. And so I'm learning, okay, if I eat this, this affects her. And so I can't have this. And so I'm just realizing like, I do better disciplined in my eating. And so I may not be doing an official challenge, but I, I feel better physically when I eat certain ways. And so it's just, all of this has been learning about myself. Um, you know, I, I try to encourage my kids like failure, failing something, quitting something or whatever. It's not that you're failing. You're just learning more about yourself. You're learning more about what works for you, what doesn't work for you. And so I had to extend that <laughs> advice to myself to be like, it's okay that we're quitting because we've learned so much. And so it's been, you know, I got into the fifties and, and it was so good. It was such a good challenge. I highly recommend doing it, pushing yourself, seeing how far you can go. If you can make it all the way. Awesome. If you can't, what did you learn about yourself? And it was, it was so good. I even did a Ningxia challenge in the middle of it with my husband. And that was really fun to do with him. We were starting this together um, he was jumping in with me. And even since then, my kids have gotten more active and just seeing mom and dad do things to take care of themselves. They've been pushing them themselves in healthier decisions, exercise, fitness, all that stuff too. And so it really does overflow into the life of the family, which is really cool as well. So that is my recap. I hope that was helpful. And you know, it's, it, it was just, it was so good. So Anyways, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I will talk to you guys 
later. Bye guys.